Imagine this. After years spent living in fear, you have finally found the means to protect your children by escaping from the home of an abusive husband. You're trying to build a new, safe life for your children and for yourself. And your family and friends are rallying to support you. There is one final and very large hurdle you have to leap. By law, you currently have joint legal custody of your children. They do not want to go back to the home of their abusive father, but he is demanding visitation. Your children beg you not to send them to his house. Armed with actual evidence of abuse, backed up by corroborating reports from numerous professionals, doctors, therapists, school counselors, and with your children openly and freely expressing their desire to stay with you, their protective, safe parent, you feel confident the judge at the family law court will do the right thing. But the judge doesn't support your children's claims or the evidence you have produced to back up their claims. Instead, a joint custody order is upheld, or worse, as punishment for bringing this abuse to the attention of the court, you lose custody altogether. Your children are forced against their will to once again live with the abusive parent you fought so hard to protect them from. In the last decade, close to 800 children have been murdered by a parent to whom, despite clear evidence of abuse, judges awarded joint and all too often sole custody of. In fact, every year in America, an average of 58,000 children are sent back into the homes of an abusive parent by a family law court judge. Since the 1980s, family law courts have been built around a flawed and dangerous theory, now debunked, that assumes that most reports of domestic violence and abuse are false. This theory is creating a climate of fear within the court system for both the children it should protect and the parents who are trying to protect them. And although it has no basis in science or research, parental alienation syndrome has become a routinely accepted theory in family law courts and amongst family court professionals. In fact, there is now a large and profitable industry of professionals who have built their careers around this theory. And for parents seeking protection for their abused children, this has become an insurmountable obstacle to securing their family's safety. Parental alienation syndrome is a theory created by Dr. Richard Gardner, based not on sound scientific research, but rather on his own deeply flawed belief system. It is not a professionally recognized syndrome. It is a discredited but well-marketed opinion that shifts the focus of blame from the abuser onto the protective parent. And through the smokescreen of parental alienation syndrome, acts of protection have become greater crimes in family law courts than acts of abuse. Although our understanding of the extent of domestic violence and our willingness to expose it has progressed since the 80s, the family law court system is still entrenched in this outdated bias that favors the rights of the abuser over the rights of the children. Recent studies clearly demonstrate that parental alienation syndrome is gender biased. Statistically, we know that it is the protective mothers who are bearing the brunt of Dr. Gartner's dangerous scientifically and factually inaccurate belief system. By supporting our work to bring the Safe Child Act to bear on all court custody cases, you can help save tens of thousands of children from a lifetime of misery. And with almost 800 avoidable childhood deaths in the last decade, you can also save lives. This legislation kicks parental alienation syndrome to the curb and requires courts to make the health and safety of children the first priority. It requires courts to adhere to the science and to listen to the right experts. The Safe Child Act would enable judges to eliminate outdated and flawed practices and bring child custody decisions into the 21st century. Visit our website at stopabusecampaign.org to make a difference. You can learn more about how this legislation will work how you can donate much-needed funds, and how you can join our team of volunteers working across the country to pass the Safe Child Act.